Hello everyone, my name is John Kraft. I'm an FAE for analog devices. More and more lately, I've been seeing a lot of X-Microwave blocks at the companies that I support here in Colorado. Uh, and this is great, X-Microwave does very cool stuff and I've been using their modules for, for quite a while for prototyping, as well as for my own projects and education. Uh, but one of my customers recently asked me for some tips and tricks on how I use those X-Microwave blocks and how I build with them. So that's what this video will be. I'll show you how I organize all the components and tools that I use. Then I'll show you some custom holders that I 3D printed to help with assembly. Next, I'll show you a very helpful interface board that analog devices developed with X-Microwave. And this board allows you to easily connect the X-Microwave plates to a Raspberry Pi or FPGA board. And it handles all of the data and power for those X-Microwave blocks. Finally, we'll put it all together and walk through an example of building a new FMCW X-Band radar using all the X-Microwave blocks. So first, let's talk about organization. There's many small parts in the X-Microwave universe. Here's some of the key components, RF blocks uh, and bias blocks, the SMA probes, anchors, uh, the little gold wafer jumpers, and the proto plate that we build it all on. I've not used the walls and lids, so I'll skip those. And to put all these things together, there are several different screws. And some of them are very close in length to the others. And if you use the wrong screw, then that screw could poke through the backside of the board and that will make it harder to install the power and control plates on the back. So it's important to always use the right screw for the right purpose. So with all these little parts, getting them organized is very important. So this little compartment box here has been very helpful to me. Uh, you can see that I've labeled the four types of screws that I use with their part number, but also with their purpose, i.e. Uh, module to board or it's an SMA screw, uh, et cetera. Then you can see all the ground signal ground anchors there's three styles of these anchors, uh, and then plus the little gold jumper that sits across the blocks. Sometimes it's hard to get those anchors in place without brushing away that gold jumper. And maybe there's a better way to do it. Uh, but for me, what helped is this little device that I created that I call the Anchor Arranger. I put it on Thingiverse if you want to 3D print your own. Uh, basically, it holds the anchors with the appropriate screws already preloaded into it. Then I just have to lift it off and set it directly on the ground signal ground jumper. I find that that jumper moves a lot less when I, when I do it this way. And since we're on Thingiverse and talking about 3D printed accessories, uh, let me tell you about another handy invention of mine. I call it the hex holder. The idea is that it's a lot easier to install these hex screws if they're all facing up. Then I can just grab one and it's already in the right orientation to screw down. So the hex holder has a little funnel on it so that when you drop a screw in there, it automatically sorts it so that the hex head faces up then it is easy to grab with a pair of tweezers. So that is also on Thingiverse and you can try it out if you think it would be helpful to you. So let me talk about one more device that may also be helpful in your prototyping. This is the standard um, interface that X-Microwave gives you and it just attaches to, to the protoplate like that. There's a different connector that I've started using and it's, it's this one here. Uh, this was made jointly by Analog Devices and X-Microwave. So you can see X-Microwave's original connector there on the bottom, and then um, the new connector on top here. Uh, bo both are available. This, the low one on the lower one is not obsolete by any means. It's, it's still available. The one on the top, though, is very useful. It gives you a number of different uh, chip select and spy lanes and I2C ports and stuff like that so that each, when you're soldering in, the power and the digital lines, you could solder them each into its own individual hole and it's just much easier to put together. And then that face plate connects to another board via two ribbon cables for all of your power and data connections. So all of your power lines come in through this black cable and then all of your digital lines like from the Raspberry Pi or from an FMC board, uh, they come in through this, through this ribbon cable here. This board here generates all of your power supplies based on a plus 12 volt rail. So it'll generate negative supplies. It's got three adjustable supplies right here. It's got fixed supplies. You can go to this website here for more information. It's also got a nice uh, YouTube video showing how to use it and connect it and what some of the features are. This is the ribbon cable that would just go to your Raspberry Pi. 
Uh, and then it also has an FMC port on the bottom if you want to plug this into an FPGA development board. Uh, in which case it would also supply power. So anyway, it's a very slick solution to supply all of your digital lines, all of your power. There's level shifters in here, so you can choose between 1.8 or 3.3 volt logic and, and in which direction that logic is gonna go. So it's a very it's a very nice, clean solution. And again, it just it plugs right into this, this board here. So all your power goes in there, all your digital lines go in there. And then again, this board allows you to connect multiple spy buses. Uh, you could have S clock for spy bus zero, say, going to multiple parts on the backside and each one gets its own solder hole. So it's a very nice, very clean uh, solution. So this is now a time-lapse of me disassembling a board. I need to create a new board. And so I'm gonna reuse a bunch of these modules. And you can see me using those 3D printed anchor arrangers there. They work out well to just, um, remove the, the jumpers and the anchors and just slide them in there and then they're, they're ready to go for next time. I'm also using an electric screwdriver fitted with a 1 16th inch bit. I generally only use that to remove the screws from the boards. It just goes a lot faster. Okay, so now we're finally ready to build our new board. This is a board that I'm doing for Michael Henrik. Uh, we're doing a presentation at the GNU Radio Conference at the end of September in Washington, DC. So this is a board we're working on. Uh, we just launched their lay layout tool and I can show you the design that we're doing. So it's all gonna fit on one protoplate. There's a ramping synthesizer here that's gonna generate our FMCW chirp. That LO is going to be split to two mixers. This mixer is going to be on the transmit side. So we're going to just transmit an IF tone. It's going to be up converted to about 10 gigahertz. And then that will go to an antenna, reflect back off of an object, come back in through another antenna connected to this SMA launch, go through some filters and mix down to about 2.2 gigahertz. And then that's going into the receive port of Pluto. And in the GNU Radio conference, we'll talk about how to control these analog devices blocks via spy using GNU radio. Okay, so now I got this, we got a very nice layout. We got the bill of materials for all the all the blocks that we need to do and all the all the jumpers and anchors. And so now we just need to build it. And this is the time lapse of that board assembly. So I apologize in advance for the video quality. I kind of had to trade off me getting in there with the low power inspection scope and the bright lights for optimal filming quality. So I realize it's not great. Um, uh, and don't feel like you have to watch the rest of this video. This will go on for another minute or two. Uh, I tried to speed it up as much as I could, but it just to give you an idea of how these things get assembled and put together, you'll see me using some of those 3D printed little blocks that we talked about before. And now I'm connecting the control and bias circuitry on the back of the board, and then I'll solder that into that, um, that bridge plate. You can also see me installing SMA launches there. This is what I really love about X-Microwave is that I can uh, insert those SMA launches in there. I can test the board, make sure that that section of circuitry is working before I go into the next section. And so that's what I did. You can see now I've removed the launches, but, but I did go in there, test them with the spectrum analyzer and uh, make sure everything was working before I proceeded on. But here is that low power inspection lens. So this is a big 5X magnifying glass, you know, one of those LED lighted ones. And uh, it works great, I love it. And it works really great for attaching the jumpers. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. We'll just uh, finish out here with the time-lapse building this board. But I hope those uh, tips and tricks were helpful. If you have your own tips and tricks that you'd like to share, please add them to the comments. Uh, I'd love, love to hear what other people are doing. Okay, thank you.